I'm Allie Buckman with PotomacBeads.com and today I want to show you how to do a simple two needle right angle bracelet called the tidal wave bracelet utilizing some six millimeter gemstones, some 15 O seed beads, 11 O seed beads, and a little two millimeter pearl in there as you create this fun design. We will be learning the two, millim or the two needle technique for the right angle weave, how to do peyote stitch along the end of the bracelet, how to reinforce our actual loops for our button clasp, and how to join the threads together at the end. If you need any of the materials for this bracelet, you can watch the very end when I list them out, or they'll be below me here in the description of the video on that little click and show more button. Remember at the end of the video, you can always give us a thumbs up, let us know what you wanna see, ask questions, and if you have any ideas for things that you would like to learn, we wanna engage you in our beading community. So stay tuned after the tidal wave bracelet towards the end to get all the details involved to making this fun, simple right angle weave bracelet. So to begin the tidal wave, because we are using two needles, we're gonna be able to put on our clasp right away. And I have that table cut button in opaque blue turquoise that I will be using for the start of the tidal wave. I have two size 11 needles, and I'm using the color eye needles just for the fun of it, on my five feet of my 0 .06, 0 .006 rather white wildfire thread. To begin, I'm gonna add a little bit of that gold color right into the middle of the cup button by adding in three of the 15 O seed beads, which are that Duracoat galvanized yellow gold color. And then I'm gonna turn the table cup button so that it is facing basically upside down. I'm going through the center of it with the needles coming out the back of the table cup button. That's gonna take those 15 O's and just add a little bit of that gold look to the front of the turquoise button. Coming out of the back of the button then, I'm going to start out with my 11 O's. So the whole base row, like I had stated, is going to be two needle right angle weave. We are creating the right angle weave by basically adding beads on the side of our thread and then crisscrossing our needle through one single 6-0 bead. To get back to the start, I wanna take three of my 11s on my right needle and three of my 11s on my left needle. You can always do this stitch as well with one needle. You do not have to use two needles. That is just a nice, simple technique that I like to teach and show because it is easier for beginners to learn. If you do wanna do one needle technique, you're gonna be doing right angle weave in the traditional style. After I have three 11s on each side, I'm gonna take a six millimeter bead, take one needle through from the right hand side going towards the left, and the other needle going from the left hand side towards the right. Again, this is going to be repeated many times in the process and the start of that right angle weave. That gets me my first bead in place. From now on, it's gonna be the same pattern, the whole length of the bracelet to form our base of our tidal wave bracelet. On both the right needle and the left needle, you wanna place one 11, one of your six millimeter bead, which I'm using that matte turquoise, and one 11 O seed bead, both on the right and the left. Let those drop down towards that six millimeter bead at the start and pick up another six millimeter. And again, we're gonna crisscross. One needle going from the right side through to the left and the other needle from the left to the right. As you pull the threads tighter then, you'll get your first right angle weave unit and you have that nice first section forming that diamond of your 6-0 seed beads. Again, continuing on, the needle in the right hand you're going to place one 11, one six millimeter, one 11. And because it is two needled right angle weave, we are doing the same thing with the left needle. So we have our setting there of one 11. After you have that one six and the, on either end and the 11s on the side, you're taking another six with the first needle going through from the right to the left and the next little needle going through from the left to the right crossing the thread so you have two threads always between the six millimeter bead that lies along the center with the with the holes going horizontal. 
The beads that are sitting with the holes horizontal will always have two threads through them as we do this baseline. The beads sitting on the vertical will always have one thread as you add them to your right or your left needle. You want to continue this baseline right angle weave with the gemstones the whole way till you have the length of your wrist. When we get to the end, I'll show you how we're going to do a peyote style loop, and then we'll come back adding in our nice wave swirls to get that tidal wave look. Once you finish your center line, which again is just that two needle right angle weave, and to give you an idea, I have about um, a six and a half inch wrist, and I like to wear things at about six and three quarters, and I have 46 of my beads that I did. So I have 15 of my little right angle units if you want to get an idea for how many beads you will need. And again, those are separated out by those 15 or by those 11 O's in the metallic chocolate color. And those are the Mayuki C beads. As I get to the other end, I'm going to create the loop to go through for the button. To do so, we're going to mimic the other side where we started out with adding three seed beads before our first gemstone. On the ending side, I'm coming out one of my center beads, and instead of adding more turquoise, I'm gonna add three seed beads on my right needle, and then likewise, I'm gonna add three seed beads on my left. Once I have those three seed beads on both the right and the left hand side, what I will do is take another 11-0 and just like we've been doing, I'm going to cross through that 11-0. So one needle is going to go from the left to the right and one from the right to the left, pushing it down towards my last of my right angle unit. And it's going to make a little triangle coming out of the bead. You want to make sure before you move on from here that you don't have a lot of extra thread showing along the right angle base. You also, if you would want to, could actually stop and leave this bracelet just as is, and it's a pretty right angle weave bracelet. From here, I'm gonna add about 24 of my 11-0 seed beads. I always use this as an opportunity to kind of clean up my mat, picking up all those little seed beads. Just a little helpful hint, when I dump out my seed beads, I usually dump them one cap full at a time, so that way I don't have a ton to pick up. And as I pick them up, I'm just excuse me, using one of my needles, and I'm going to dump out a couple more. And then we're going to come back through and reinforce it as well as make a little bit of a peyote stitch because I think that adds a lot to the end. So I'm going to add a couple more of my 11s. You want to make sure that you can go around whatever clasp you're using. If you are using a metal clasp, you want to make sure to use a wire guard before adding that metal clasp if you can. And you would add the clasp on at this point as well. So I have my beads on here and my first loop. I'm going to take that same needle and thread, go back through that 11-0 that we crossed through and make my loop. Again, just bring your clasp down, make sure that you can fit through that loop with your button. To reinforce it, I'm going to go back through because it's a little bit heavier, I wanna make sure that I have three strands through. I'm gonna go back through all of those 11 O beads with the same needle that is in my hand. So I haven't picked up the other needle at all. I'm just using the same needle. Going back through all of them. And then again, just like I did previously, I'm gonna go back through the 11 O seed bead that joins all of them. Give a nice tight pull, get rid of that extra thread. Now what I'm gonna do is do the peyote stitch along the loop. If you're not familiar with peyote stitch, you can watch some of the other YouTube videos if you would like. And what I'm gonna do is add in my gold 15-0 color. So get a couple of your 15-0s out and we'll get ready to add the peyote look and make our loop a little bit more decorative. So to do the peyote stitch, I have my thread and needle. Again, I'm still using just the one. The other one's kind of hanging out there to the left. And I'm gonna go through the first 11-0 in my loop. So I'm going through that first chocolate bead. As I come out the first chocolate bead, I'm gonna add two of my 15-0s in that Duracoat galvanized yellow gold. And that's gonna put two seed beads right along the outer edge. I sew through the next bead, add two beads, and sew along that outer edge again. 
skipping a bead and you can see then that little peyote stitch that's happening with the two beads sitting along the side. Sewing through a bead, add two 15s, skip a bead, sew through the next. So like I said, if you don't know peyote stitch, you can go ahead and watch one of the other peyote videos that will help to get this nice little clasp. If you don't want to do the peyote, you can also just simply take your thread through one more time and then wait to catch up to the next step where we start to get those tidal waves. So you're going to continue the whole way along the outer edge, adding in two 15 O's in place of one 11 O in the peyote stitch. The reason we're adding two 15 O's obviously is because the 15 O's are smaller than the 11 O's. And if we added just one in place, it would actually um, make the loop smaller and kind of pull it in on itself. So we're adding two of the 15s in place of one 11. If you do want to keep the look of just the bronze on the outside, that chocolate color, you can also just use one uh, 11 OC bead in place of the two 15s as you continue around the loop. So I'm continuing around, adding in those 15 O's. And as I finish then my loop and come around, we'll get ready to start that tidal wave along the top. As you progress along the top of the tidal wave bracelet, you may get to a point where you kind of are running out of thread because we had equal amounts at the start. What I'm gonna do, because it is a gemstone and it's a little bit heavier, I'm actually gonna reinforce this bottom line and get caught up with the loop, the thread that I made my loop with. So coming out of that first 11 O bead, I'm gonna go back through the three seed beads along the side. And then I'm just gonna zigzag through my six millimeter bead along the sides here, not catching the 15. And then come up the sides through my 11 and my six and my 11. Go through the next center six and go up then through those top beads. I'm just, I'm just reinforcing that baseline every other bead and just retracing through the thread steps that my beads are already through. And on the front, again, I flipped this to the back because this section of the tidal waves are already in place. So I'm just running up along the back and getting caught up to my beads. Once I get caught up to where my thread is short, then I'm actually going to tie off my thread and kind of bring the thread back down towards itself rather than in the middle. So I'm going to work this thread the whole way up, reinforce my clasp, and then come back to my starter or my stopping thread right there. So I'm going to take this thread again the whole way up, reinforce going through the clasp, and then as I come down, I'll add the tidal waves in. So adding the last two 15s in place, I'm coming back through that first 11 O that the thread has been coming through on either side. I'm gonna let that thread that is shorter now because I used it along the clasp, just sit off to the side and pick up the alternating piece of thread. You can see that nice decorated loop that does add a lot to the look of the actual end. To get to a starting position to start our tidal waves, I'm going to take the thread and needle that I haven't been using, pick it up, and it's coming out currently through that 11 O seed bead. I'm going to go down the three beads along the side of the bracelet here that connect to the clasp and through the 6 O along the middle, the very middle 6 O. My thread then should be coming out on the left hand side of that 6 O bead and we're done now with the 11 O seed beads. What we are going to get ready for is our two millimeter pearls, or you can simply use an 8 OC bead or a crystal if you prefer. So I have my two millimeter pearls that are going to sit in, con in conjunction along that tidal wave, kind of looking like bubbles on the wave uh, with the 15 O's. To begin, we're going to add six of our 15 O's onto the needle. Then I want you to pick up one of your two millimeter beads, get that on your needle and add six more of your 15 O's. Once you have those six 15's on your needle, you're gonna take your needle and thread 
back through that same six millimeter bead from the other side, which is going to lay those seed beads and the pearl right along the top of that six millimeter bead. So you can see it lays right along the top there, almost like a loop. To get it to lay down and make that nice wave design, I want you to take your thread and needle and go back up through the first six fifteens of those gold color and bring your needle out before the pearl. So we're not going back through the pearl. Take the needle out. And then at this point, I want you to do a little tight grab, forcing those beads to sit down next to the 6O seed beads. Go ahead then and add on six more of your 15 O's when coming out of the 15s on the side and sew through the next six O B or six millimeter bead that sits with the thread on the horizontal. Sewing through from the right hand side over to the left. And you can see you get your nice little wave there. This gets repeated to get that nice wave and get that pearl in place. So again, we have six of our seed beads that we add. Then we add one pearl, six seed beads, and we sew back through that same six millimeter bead from the other side to create our starter loop. From there, we go up the six 11 O's, the first six, and out before the pearl. Give a nice tight yank and get rid of any extra thread that's showing. Add in six more seed beads. And once you have those six seed beads, progress to the next six millimeter bead and go from the right to the left. And that pops my next tidal wave right in place there. If you want it to sit tighter along the bead, you can also change the count from six to five of your 15s. If you are using a Toho 15, you will definitely want to change the count to five versus the six for the Miyuki that I'm using. This wave is going to continue dropping in those little bubbles the whole way up the bracelet till you get to your clasp. Once you finish along the top with the tidal wave design, if you want to, you can actually come down the sides and kind of arch in and go around some of the eight and play around with the decorating on the top of the actual right angle weave. I have my two threads coming out along the same place here. And what I'm gonna do is simply tie off those threads going right over left and left over right, tying them off towards the back of the bracelet. So you can see I have the back out and I'll tie those off. Once I have those tied off, if you want to, you can take your thread and needle just like in any peyote stitch or any other stitch and kind of bring that down into the project further so you're not burning off the thread ends in the exact same place, which tends to cause um, a little bit more thread to show. So I have them pulled through. I'll burn off this one right along the top here. Taking my thread up, burning that down. And then I'll take the one along the side here, burn that down, and burn that towards the back as well, making sure as you are doing the thread burner that you're not burning any other threads in its path because you don't want your bracelet to fall apart, obviously. Once you are finished them and you have your fun tidal wave along the top, you can continue to make earrings, you can make necklaces. This would be a really pretty necklace pattern as well with that kind of tidal wave going along the bottom. And it bends and it is flexible because of the style of the right angle weave. That you could do a whole necklace like this as well to give you a different idea. Change up the colors, have fun. You can see I started decorating the top of this bracelet too, which is just the mix of gemstones. You can use check glass with a little bit of shine or facets and really play around with the design of this tidal wave bracelet. Again, the materials that I used were the matte turquoise six millimeter bead. I used the 15 O's in the galvanized gold color. I used the 11 O's in the metallic chocolate. Both of those are the Miyuki brand. And then I used two millimeter check pearls. I had about 14 units, so I used 14 pearls and enough seed beads to go with that, along with the table cup button at the end for my clasp. 
The thread I always prefer is the Wildfire Beading Thread in 0 .006, and I use size 11 needles to go along with the th two lengths of thread. Always have a thread burner handy too, that's a little word of advice as we part, as well as a needle nose pliers to flatten out the end of your thread to make it easier to thread your needles. Again, if you need any of the materials for this, I'll put links in the description box below the video, which has the date stamp when the video was published. Hit that little show more button and you can get links to purchase from me online at potomacbeads.com and potomacbeads.eu. As always, if you want to give me a thumbs up and tell me that you like the video, that's great. That helps me to know exactly what you want to see. Make sure the, tailored, the videos are tailored towards you, as well as answer any questions that you may have about the design. As always, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to get regular updates when new videos are posted, new design ideas, and new information that we think you should know from our Potomac Bead Company community. You can also join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Show what you've made there, get inspiration, ask questions, and have a fun time looking through all of the wonderful things that people design. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have fun creating, and if you get your hands on some six millimeter beads or even downgrading to some four millimeter beads, you can make and check out and try out different kind of waves along this tidal wave bracelet.